Okay, welcome to our monthly webinar. Um, this time we're going to talk about the most important KPIs for your online store and how you can measure them. Um, and today we're going to host this webinar together with Stretchboard. So let me go to the next slide. Okay, let's start with a few notes. Um, you can ask any questions uh, using the panel on your right hand side. Um, you can ask them during the webinar so you don't have to, uh, to wait. Um, but we're going to answer all your questions at the end. Uh, also, we're going to post this webinar on our website, which is seoshop.nl. And there's a section called resources and uh, followed by webinars. And that's where you will find this webinar. Um, if you want to use Twitter to ask any questions or if you have any comments, you can uh, do it as well. And you can use a hashtag, uh, which is SEOshop. So some brief introductions. Uh, my name is uh, Bert van Meeling. Most of you will probably know me from uh, previous webinars. Uh, I'm the marketing manager at SEO Shop, And I'm going to give a brief introduction on KPIs. So I'm going to tell you what KPIs are and why they are very important. Um, but just a brief introduction, just to give you an, an, an idea of uh, what it's going to be about. Um, and I'm very lucky because uh, today we have a stretch board on this webinar, and um, represented by the founder and CEO, uh, Kasper Larsen. And uh, Kasper basically knows everything about KPIs and creating dashboards, so he's really going to, to dive into the topic a bit deeper than I'm going to. Um, so definitely uh, stay on this webinar and um, you'll hear a lot of things about KPIs and dashboards. Uh, so just a brief introduction on uh, SEO Shop for those uh, who haven't been on this webinar before. Um, SEO Shop is a company where you can basically start your own online store anywhere in Europe. And um, it's quite easy because uh, you don't need any developers. Uh, you can basically just start it yourself and it's almost as easy as starting your own uh, Gmail account. So you just have to fill out a few forms and uh, you can immediately start building your store and uh, filling it with uh, your products. So we have different customers, um, more than uh, 8,500 customers around Europe, mostly in the Netherlands uh, and Germany. Um, and these customers uh, range from really small ones to the bigger ones. So uh, we have customers like uh, Philips, National Geographic, uh, and the Van Gogh Museum here in Amsterdam. Uh, so it's basically very suitable for a, a very wide range of, uh, of customers. Um, this is what the back office looks like, and you can basically do anything in your back office. So you can uh, add products, you can um, manage your orders, um, and you can even change your design. We have a, a team store filled with uh, designs that you can just activate with a simple click. And if you want a bit more, there is an HTML and CSS editor that allows you to, to really modify your online store the way you want it. Um, we're growing really fast. We started here in Amsterdam, um, but we're growing really fast in the, the German market especially. Um, that's why we have an office in Frankfurt. And um, yeah, we're going to uh, hopefully take over the rest of Europe very, very soon. But that's uh, enough about SEO shop. Let's really talk about the topic uh, for today. And as you know, it's all about KPIs. So my first question is, who knows what KPIs are? And I should have a poll for this that I can pull up now. There we go. So let's see, do you know what KPIs are? I see that many of you are already voting, so thank you very much. Okay, so let's pull up the results. It's quite a close call. So most of you uh, do actually know what KPIs are, so that's really, really great. And uh, some of you still find it a bit tricky. Um, so let's go into it a little bit deeper. So KPIs are uh, measurable elements of your online store. Uh, in this case, it's about your online store because we're talking about SEO shop. So KPIs that uh, are measurable elements of your online store that provide insight into the success of your online store. So the two most important elements are that they are measurable and that they give insight in success of your online store. KPIs are uh, usually part of uh, SMART goals. Uh, and SMART goals are basically goals that you set up to, um, 
to measure the success of your online store. Um, and it consists of five elements. Uh, the first is specific, and uh, this is where you, you ask questions like who, what, where, when, which, and why. I'll actually give an example after this slide uh, to give you a bit of a better feeling of what smart goals can look like. Um, as I said, there is a measurable part, uh, and the measurable part is the, are actually the KPIs. So that's what we're going to talk about uh, today. Uh, then there is an attainable part, and the attainable part is about um, what is needed to reach your goal. And that means which activities are you going to, um, to, to do in order to, to reach the goal, which, for instance, may be um, reaching a certain amount of uh, revenue at the end of the year. Um, then realistic. Obviously, you want to be very ambitious, but it may not always be very realistic to, uh, to set a specific goal. So you have to really think of, uh, you have to be ambitious, but you have to be realistic about your, your goal setting. And lastly, uh, you need to think of your uh, time. Like, when do you want to, to reach a certain goal? How much time do you need to reach it? So that's a bit of a framework uh, of a SMART goal. Uh, and KPIs, as you said, are part of those SMART goals. So let's give an example of a SMART goal. So if we look at specific, uh, you want to say that, for instance, you want to set uh, a, a certain total revenue. Um, measurable, so that's really about the KPIs. So, for instance, uh, in order to reach that revenue, you want to measure uh, your monthly number of sales, or you want to measure your order value, or your monthly revenue, or maybe you want to measure all of them. Um, so those elements will show whether you're reaching your goal of getting that, that revenue that you're trying to get. So then when we look at attainable, um, it's about the things that you want to do to reach your goal. So maybe you want to send a certain amount of email campaigns, or maybe you want to launch uh, a certain amount of AdWords campaigns in order to get people to visit your site. Then we're looking at the realistic part. Um, obviously, there are many things you want to do, but you're probably uh, tied to a certain marketing budget. And uh, in the realistic element, you want to say what that marketing budget will be. And lastly, you want to say when you want to reach your goal. So for instance, maybe you want to reach your goal by the end of the year. So this is what a SMART goal can look like. And um, as I say, today we're going to talk about the measurable part, uh, which is all about the KPIs. So you probably can understand that there can be many, many KPIs that you can measure for your online store. And because there are so many KPIs, it's very good to to cluster those KPIs. So to basically give them um, a category where you can uh, you know, make it a little bit easier to, to manage those KPIs. Um, you'll see that um, Casper has a, a different set of clusters. Um, I generally work a lot with uh, Google Analytics, and that's why I basically chose those four uh, clusters, which represent the way that Google Analytics is uh, laid out. Uh, so the first one is acquisition. <laughs> An acquisition is really about uh, the visitors of your online store. So for instance, the number of visitors, um, also returning visitors. Then behavior, which is about the micro-conversions. And um, <coughs> the difference between a micro-conversion and a real conversion is that, uh, especially in the case of an online store, an ultimate conversion is, for instance, a purchase, but a micro-conversion is uh, someone putting a product in your shopping cart. So in that case, the person didn't actually buy the product yet, but they have done something in order to, to buy your product. And lastly, uh, loyalty, which is really about uh, returning customers. Um, well, if you're an SEO shop customer, you'll probably know that we have a number of, of apps that can help you uh, measure your, the loyalty in your online store. Uh, for instance, we have Loyalty Lion and Prooflink, and they can basically help you to increase the loyalty in your online store. So, as I said, there are four clusters uh, in, in the way that I'm looking at it. Um, the first one uh, is acquisition, and there are a number of KPIs that you can measure. Um, the first one is, for instance, visitors. You want to know how many people are visiting your online store. Um, that's important, but you obviously also want to know um, what kind of visitors are coming to your online store. And that's why you should probably also look at uh, new visitors versus returning visitors. It could be that people will buy something in your online store the first time, but 
maybe they will actually buy something after they came back the, the fourth or the fifth, maybe even the sixth or seventh time. Um, so those elements can give you a lot of insight. Um, you should also look at your, your page views because maybe customers will visit your site and uh, they will want to read more about your product before they actually buy something. Maybe they want to, to read more about your company to understand who you are um, and what you basically believe in, what you're, why you're different from, from other um, companies that offer the same things. So page views are also very important. Um, and lastly, you, you should look at uh, paid traffic. Um, because obviously if you 80% of your traffic is coming from uh, channels like AdWords, you may be very dependent on those channels. And you may want to, to look at other channels, for instance, organic channels. So those are just four uh, KPIs um, for the cluster acquisition that are very interesting to look at. And as you will see, there are, are many more KPIs that can be measured. Um, on behavior, um, I selected three KPIs that are interesting to, to look at. Uh, the first one is shopping cart abandonment. And that means that um, people can visit your online store, put something in your shopping cart, but in the end decide to, to not buy your product. Um, those customers you definitely want to, to retarget. And uh, we have a couple of apps for that as well that allow you to, to retarget those very easily. Uh, My abandoned cart, for instance, is an example of uh, a shopping cart abandonment app. Um, but this gives a lot of insight because if there are many customers that put something in the, your shopping cart but don't actually um, purchase the product, that could mean that maybe they want to look around somewhere else and maybe they find your product somewhere else cheaper. Uh, so that means that you, you should look at your, uh, your product offering. Newsletter subscriptions uh, can tell you a lot. Um, most online stores, or at least most e-commerce sites, um, have about a 2 to 3% conversion rate. So that means that 98% of your visitors are actually not buying something the moment that they come to your online store. And it's, it's a pity because you probably invested a lot of money in those. Um, so that means that you should find other ways to, to kind of catch their attention and to make them come back to your online store. And one way of doing that could be um, asking them to sign up for your newsletter. And that's why newsletter subscriptions can basically help you to, to retarget those customers or, or retarget those visitors and make them customers. And the last one is uh, social media followers uh, because obviously you also want to know um, that that's another way of, of reaching out to them again. So you can use your newsletter to reach out to them a second time, but you can also use social media to, to kind of interact with them and to kind of stimulate them to, to stay in touch with you and maybe um, purchase something from you and another time. Activation, obviously very important because that's where uh, people actually buy your product. Uh, so you can look at the number of orders, um, which is very useful, probably tells you a lot. But it's not just about the numbers, of course, it's also about uh, the amount that people will spend the moment that they place an order. So the average order amount is probably as important as the number of orders. Uh, your total turnover is probably something that you really want to, to measure as a KPI. Um, your main product groups, maybe there are a couple of uh, products that sell really well, that sell better than others. Um, you may want to know which products those are because then, who knows, maybe you want to set up uh, a specific online store for, just for those products. So the other products won't cannibalize um, your, your best product groups. And lastly, conversion rate is very important because that tells you how many visitors actually turned into customers. So how many visitors actually decided to buy something in your online store. And the last uh, part of the cluster is loyalty. Um, and a number of KPIs that you can measure are mentioned here. Uh, new customers versus returning customers. Um, you probably want to know if customers buy something once in your online store or if they maybe come back uh, many times to buy something from you. Um, you probably want to know the order amount from your new customers versus your returning customers, um, because maybe new customers don't spend as much money as the returning customers do. If that's the case, you probably want to use email marketing um, to target those returning customers and really make them feel comfortable to go to your online store and buy more. 
so they will be more interesting than uh, your new customers. Refer friends uh, can be very useful to measure uh, because you know your best customers can be your your brand ambassadors, and we'll talk about uh, you um, in your online store. And lastly, customers may even write reviews about you. For instance, on uh, Trustpilot, um, on, on um, apps like Akio or the Feedback Company, um, where they say a lot of positive things about you that you can share again on your online store to basically attract new visitors to become uh, your customers. Well, that's a lot of information, and uh, that's why we also have uh, um, a really nice blog post about uh, the KPIs for your online store. And we actually have it available in Dutch and English. So I can actually share that one with you through the chat. So you can give it a read when you have time for this. And let me see. There we go. That's the first one in English. And as I said, we also have it available in Dutch for those who prefer to read in Dutch. And you should be able to see it now in your chat. Um, so that will give you a chance to, to look at these topics a bit more uh, and really take your time to, to understand how the KPIs uh, work and what you can measure. Um, so I have another poll for you um, because obviously some of you said that you know what KPIs are, but I'm very curious to hear if you are also um, measuring those KPIs at the moment. So let's see, I'm going to pull that up now. So I'm very curious to hear if you're currently measuring your KPIs. I see that most of you are again voting, that's really good. Okay, it seems that most have voted. Great, thank you very much. And we see that most of you at the moment are not measuring your KPIs. 74% uh, is not measuring this and 26% uh, is. So thank you very much. Uh, so my last question is, obviously, so some of you are measuring this. If you are, which tools are you using at the moment to track those KPIs? So there are a couple of uh, tools that I mentioned here. Google Analytics uh, can be used, obviously, your SEO shop back office, where you can find a lot of information, for instance, on a dashboard. Uh, maybe you're already using Stretchboard. Um, maybe get clicky or maybe another tool and if you're using another tool I, I'd love to hear which tools you're actually using so if you can share that with the chat that would be extremely extremely useful okay great thank you very much and we see that most of you are actually using Google Analytics and the SEO shop back office uh, and a couple of you are using Get Clicky, which is also a tool that you can integrate with the uh, SEO shop. And we already see a couple of answers. I see that someone is using uh, Swido. Well, thank you very much. Great. Thank you. All right. So, as I said, you can use Google Analytics to um, basically track your results. Um, and if you want to know more about Google Analytics, we actually have a, a white paper on that as well, which you can download on our website on shareshop.nl. Um, and afterwards, I will actually share the link, the direct link to this uh, white paper as well. You can download it for free. It gives you the basics of Google Analytics if you want to, to start uh, working with that. Um, and if you're already quite skilled with Google Analytics, I have a, a little tip that I'm using myself. Um, there is, um, if you're familiar with Google Spreadsheets, um, there's actually an app that you can install and it connects your uh, Google Spreadsheets with Google Analytics. And the cool thing is that that basically allows you to pull out all the information from Google Analytics into your spreadsheet 
and create the dashboards that you want to create. So it gives you a lot of flexibility on creating your own dashboard. Um, it's very easy, you just go to Google Spreadsheet, you open a new spreadsheet and at the top you will find the bar that says add-ons and that's basically where you, if you click on it you can immediately see uh, this app here, Google Analytics, that you can just click on and install and it basically connects it uh, very easily. If you're interested in this, I actually am thinking of writing an article on that, so let me know if that will be interesting to you. Um, so, great, thank you. And I think, yeah, that brings us to my last slide, because obviously if you want to pull out all the information from Google Analytics and you want to measure all these KPIs, and there are so many, many, many KPIs, it's obviously very hard to, to keep track of it and to, to really measure it very easily. Um, Thank God there is a better way of doing that, and that's uh, Stretchboard. And that's why we have Stretchboard on uh, the webinar today. And I'm very pleased to switch over to, to Casper now. But first, I'll make sure that you can actually speak. I'm muted. <laughs> I am here. Thank you, Bertram. Perfect. Then I'll turn myself off. I think we need to ask Bertrand to switch to my screen, which happened there. Okay, thank you all for taking the time to uh, to hear about KPIs in general. I think Bertrand made a very nice introduction for, for Stretchboard because uh, showing the different KPIs that uh, you can extract from uh, Google Analytics basically showed you some of the problems that has led to us developing Stretchboard as a product. Now, we believe in the idea of running a business by the numbers. We believe that if you don't know the numbers of your business, if you don't know your targets, your progress towards the targets, for instance, you're basically guessing and your success would be based on luck. Now, um, Bertram showed you, uh, all of us, the, uh, the KPIs that you can extract from, uh, from, for instance, Google Analytics. And Kasper, Google Kasper, Anal Kasper, we cannot see your screen yet. Ah, okay, excellent. So, <laughs> so I should move backwards. <laughs> I think you, you have to hit the button. You switch it, right? Yeah, I switch it. Okay. Shall I switch it back? Because then you will get the message again. No, I know it's fine. I'm I'm ready. If you are, if you can switch to my screen, then whoops. Let me try again. I'll try again. Okay, here we go. This time it should work. Okay. Please confirm. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not going to give you the full introduction again because uh, I, that would be a waste of everybody's time. Now, as I mentioned, running a business by the numbers, uh, to, to in, in order to be able to do that, you would require to have easy access to the numbers. And as Bertram showed you, the Google Analytics, which is an amazing tool, will allow you to find a lot of answers. It will give you uh, an answer to the question of uh, which pages do the visitors prefer, uh, which products do they prefer, but what it doesn't provide you with is uh, our conclusions to all of these questions. So it will give you answers, but it won't aggregate these answers into simple to read conclusions. Now you could actually put it in a way like this. You start with having a lot of technical insights. You will know exactly how each page is performing. You will know the, uh, the movement patterns of the visitors of your website. And you can aggregate that towards what you could call business insights. But a business insight in our perspective is more of, is my business performing? Am I reaching my targets? And if I am reaching my targets, why spend the time investigating the reasons for me reaching the targets? We would rather pre recommend you to turn it the other way around by having the business insights. For instance, am I making the money I want to? If I'm not, then you can dig into the technical insights and use tools like Google Analytics. The problem, and that is one of the things I'm going to show you, is keeping track of your business with, by starting with the technical dashboards will require a lot of time investment from your side. And my guess is that even though you might be familiar with Google Analytics, 
investing the time is not really feasible when you have to run your business as well. It's a very specialized tool providing very specialized answers. And at the end of the day, what we would like to know is basically how do the visitors visiting our website perceive our store? How do we perform after we receive an order? And are we making any money? Now, to measure these three different main categories, we see a number of different KPIs. And Bertram mentioned some of them, and he's totally right. We see things a little bit different, because you will see the KPIs that we are measuring might be more uh, general and more business-oriented than the rather technical ones that Google Analytics is focusing on. Now, in terms of the web store, we will uh, naturally monitor some of the same ones, the visitors, the unique visitors, how many orders do we receive, how many uh, customers end up leaving without, uh, without purchasing anything, the conversion rate, the average order value, which is rather important, uh, especially if you compare it with other KPIs, which I'm going to show you in a second. Um, in terms of the logistics, we monitor how do our business perform once a customer actually purchases something. Are we uh, on top of sending out the, uh, the products? Are we, uh, uh, having, um, are we having packages coming back, et cetera, et cetera. And naturally, at the end of the day, how are our uh, financial side of it? What is the revenue, the most important one? What is the total order value? I'm going to go back to these in a second. Now, if we look at these 12 KPIs, then we need to find the, uh, the information somewhere. Um, and as Bertrand mentioned, there are different sources. One of them is, of course, Google. Google Analytics provides uh, amazing insight into the visitors themselves. And SeroShop provides a number of uh, KPI insights as well. So, for instance, in, in SeroShop, I would be able to find the number of orders. I'd be able to find the number of returns, although it might be a little bit tricky, which I will get back to. Some of the KPIs you need to calculate. You can't find the answers directly. So, to monitor these things, you would have to go into Google Analytics, find the, uh, find the appropriate information. And if you need a little bit more advanced information, you would have to use what Google is calling their Query Explorer. The Query Explorer allows you to do uh, advanced uh, queries into the Google Analytics database, providing you with, for instance, historical data on the uh, performance of your website. SeroShop has uh, these historical data already, and it will actually allow you to browse through different kinds of information. If with a mouse over, you'll be able to see the daily value, etc. cetera. Um, but what if we wanted to monitor something like returns? Uh, in SeroShop, we have these different overviews, but returns are displayed like this. So if I wanted to have it, a KPI active on my website or in my dashboard that would allow me to see how many returns per day do I have in my web store. It's a rather important KPI. Then I would actually have to calculate or actually count them in this list manually. So I would have to go through each of these to see is this a return or is it a refund, uh, all depending on whether the individual order has been paid or not. It of course, is doable, but it will take a lot of time. And just to make it a little more interesting, what if we didn't just want today's value? What if we wanted to compare our performance to last week, for instance, or just yesterday? In that case, I would have to count two different times, and I would have to compare and calculate the index number between these two periods. And I could continue like this with all the individual KPIs, and I'll get back to show you how, how it's actually done in real life. Now, getting back to this overview, uh, we have these three primary sources, Google, we have SeroShop, and we have our good old-fashioned calculator, which we use to, uh, to, to calculate some of the KPIs. Now, the number of calculations which has to be done could be illustrated like this. This would give me uh, the value of today, the value of the week, the month, and the year, which would allow me to uh, to give uh, to provide an impression of the progress in uh, in my business. But 
I could also add something like indexes. However, I would have to calculate those manually. An index is rather interesting. For instance, if my order value today is 1,500 euro and it was 1,000 at the same time last week, I will know that I have an increase in my, uh, in my order value, which is very easy to read rather than me having to go through all the historical values of, uh, of each individual KPI. So getting back to the returns, we could assume that, or just as an example, say that today's value is 100, the week's total is 200, month total is 400, and the annual total is 900. Now, those numbers are all very fine, and if I know my budgets, I would be able to, to compare them to my budget immediately. But the problem is that remembering budgets and targets for each of these KPIs is a, is a project in itself. So comparing them might not be as easy. Getting back to this overview, we could imagine that these are the actual values, but if we wanted to compare them or even add a comparison to the, uh, uh, to the budgets and targets, the number of KPIs or metrics that we would have to calculate will look like this. We started off with 12 different KPIs and we end up with 208 different metrics that we need to calculate to monitor our business. Now, the bad thing about all of these things with KPIs is that once I've invested the time to actually find these information, they are probably already obsolete because it would have taken me an hour or so to do the calculations, and then I need to redo them to see what has happened since last time. This is where a dashboard, no matter whether it's Stretchboard or Google Analytics, becomes handy because they can provide this information on the fly. If I had to do it myself, I'm looking at something like this, where I would probably end up with a nice looking piece of paper with an enormous amount of calculations. So if we pretend that we have uh, found the information, the next step in order to make them usable from a business perspective is to make them readable. And if we, uh, if we just take one of the KPIs that we started out with, this is our take of how it's done at least. Now, we could imagine the order value. We will naturally need to have the, uh, the KPI list so everybody knows what it is. We will have today's value. So now we know that today we have had an order value of 3,577.75 euros. That's a nice information, but how does this compare to last week, for instance, or last month, or last year? In order to, to monitor that, we add indexes. And basically, an index is a number where we compare and divide the value of today with the value of last week, last month, and last year. If you are above 100, it's green. If you are below 100, it's uh, red. And if you are at 100 exactly, you will have the same value as the last week. This gives you an instant indication of whether your trend is going up or down. But to support that as well, we calculate a rolling average, uh, which will show you the progress of your business during the last uh, 30 days. And naturally, you need to be able to monitor the total for the month and the week, month and year as well. If you know your budgets and your targets, you can add them as well, which will allow you to see progress bars that indicates uh, how close you are to meeting your targets. And um, this is one widget containing the information just for one KPI. If you want to see historical information, you would need to put them in charts like this, same approach. You can change the period, you can see the legend, you can select what kind of information. I will show you all of this in a second. Each chart should have a primary value, which is the value of today, and a rolling average. When you are using dashboards, no matter which kind of dashboard, a trend indicator is very important. Monitoring your business over time, the only way you can do it with the fluctuation, as you can see in, the, in this chart as well, is to monitor uh, it through a trend line. Now, um, instead of just doing slideware, uh, I have prepared a small demo of Stretchboard for you. 
And to do that, I would actually like to start in C U Shop. One of the uh, one of the downsides and one of the reasons we started out doing stretch board was we saw there are a number of dashboard products on the market. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Most of them are actually quite quite good in, in, in their quality. But the problem with most of them is that the, uh, the skill set required to work with them is pretty high. If you take Google Analytics, for instance, you would really need to know what you're doing to get quality output out of it. You would need to install a script. Uh, and basically, you would need some technical insights to be able to make uh, make use of it. So one of the first uh, hurdles that we wanted to tackle is to remove all entry barriers. So to get a dashboard up and running, stream from our perspective, should be as easy as installing an app in, for instance, Geoshop. And in order to do that, I will have to allow the connection between the two systems. And we will then extract all the relevant information, if possible, from uh, from CEOshop directly, so you don't have to do anything except create yourself a password. If we don't know the URL of your store, we will need to. We will need to know your time zone. Doesn't really matter that much now. We are in Canada and an industry which is used for statistical purposes. And then you're basically up and running. This is all it takes and this is all it should take to get a dashboard up and running. Uh, now we will aggregate and we are already starting to, to pull out all the different uh, information from SEO Shop. Um, and if you want to use information from Google Analytics as well, you simply say you would like to connect with Google you will be asked which account to use and you have the integration to Google Analytics in your dashboard as well. Now, what you see here are the same widgets like I just showed you in the PowerPoint. You will just see them grouped in our financial performance. You will see our web store performance and at the bottom you will see our warehouse performance. Basically, from the top to bottom is, do I make any money? How do people perceive our website and is it performing? And how do we perform after we have received the orders? Now, each of these widgets contains the same information like we just saw. And if I know my targets, for instance, for my order value, let's say I have a daily target of 15,000 a weekly target of 50,000, a monthly of 100,000, etc. I simply click my settings and I add the correspondent values and click save and this will add the progress bars allowing me to immediately see do I meet my targets. This can be done for any of the KPIs in a very easy way. All the, all the different charts that you will see here as well, this one looks quite interesting. Naturally, this is based on our uh, demo store, so it might not really represent what you will see once you, uh, once you try out Stretchboard. But you will see the, uh, the daily values like this, and you will see the, uh, uh, the corresponding rolling average. Let's say you only want to see a uh, rolling average, for instance, you can remove any content from any chart simply by clicking the corresponding uh, object in the, in the legend and you will have uh, your chart updated immediately. If you want to compare, for instance, let's say I can now see that I'm very close to meeting my targets for order value, but if I had any problems here and I wanted to figure out what is the reason, I might want to compare two different KPIs. Let's say I want to compare my order value with my average order size, for instance. To do so, you simply click the corresponding uh, widget, which will give you our uh, KPI comparison tool, and you select which other, um, which other uh, KPI you would like to compare it to, and it will be updated immediately in the KPI comparison. Again, this is based on our demo store, so it is not really representative. 
this is all I am, and I'm not going to give you a long speech about Stretchboard, but the key uh, message that I would like to give you from here is simplicity. It should be easy. It shouldn't be like you guys having to spend all of your time monitoring your business. You need to run your business as well. Therefore, our recommendation would be to start with a dashboard that gives you the business insights, that gives you the conclusions before you search for the answers. If you need the answer, if your business dashboard tells you that you have a challenge with a lot of abandoned cards, for instance, then a, Google, a tool like Google Analytics will provide you the answers to why you have that problem. But Google Analytics will not give you the original uh, alert and say, here's something wrong. For that, you need a business dashboard. That is Stretchboard in short, and those are the KPIs that we feel are very important to run your business. It's easy to set up. It's easy to use. It will update itself. You need no technical skills. This is how we think a dashboard should be. With those words, I will give it back to you, Bertrand. Thank you very much. Because that means that we're now uh, going into the questions. And I see that not many people have asked any questions. So I think they were listening to your story. <laughs> <laughs> or they have fallen asleep. <laughs> I think it was the first. <laughs> Maybe I made him sleep. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. Well, guys, come up with the questions because we don't see any questions yet. Let me see. I see one. It's about uh, SKU, what a SKU is. That's a stock keeping unit, right? So that's basically a product sale, correct? Yes. No, it's, an, it's a product in stock. Um, it, uh, the, that KPI basically monitors how many active products do you have in your store. One of the reasons that you might see a decrease in sale is because your product uh, segment or product variety is not good enough. So monitoring the number of SKUs is very important. Okay, great. Uh, okay, I'm going to a question from uh, Yvonne Echbering. And she's asking if the software is also available in, in Dutch. Right now it's only available in English. But the numbers are universal. Yeah, exactly. No, we, we use the same metric system. Yeah, so. uh, sorry. Um, a question from uh, Sander Stein. Uh, does the software uh, interpret the data and give any strategic suggestions? Yes. It does. Um, in addition to, to just uh, in, in brackets, just providing the, uh, the KPIs and, and doing all the calculation for you, we have a library of, uh, of algorithm that, that uh, monitors the progress of your business. So if we can see that there's something happening, for instance, we can see the number of visitors is the same, but your, your order value is decreasing, we will, we will send you an alert through our messaging system, which is available in the uh, in the dashboard itself, but you will also receive an email. So this library is constantly uh, constantly evolving, um, and we extend it almost every week. So uh, so we will proactively uh, interpret the information that we can pull out of the various information sources and provide you suggestions as to how to improve your business and make more money. Great. Uh... Wow, this is really great. Like normally we have a lot of questions, but <laughs> I think you answered many questions. Good. Okay. So I, I guess that's a really uh, fast one. If, if there's uh, no... Maybe, uh, Bertrand, we could say that if people uh, want to try Stretchboard, there's a 14-day free trial period. So it's just to go to the uh, Shop app store and try it out. It takes, as you can see, uh, less than a minute signing up. Try it out. If you like it, stay. If you don't like it, just uninstall the app and uh, and you have tried it for free. Yeah, great. And actually, I missed that part. But what is the the normal monthly fee again? Oh, it's it's immense. It's uh, right now it's fifteen euro. Okay. <laughs> great. Okay. Well, great. I mean, if there are no other questions. Oh, there, there's one more. How how do I start a SKU number? Oh, oh, oh sorry. SKU number. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
I, I think that that question more re relates to uh, to SEO shop basically because SKU is simply adding a product to your product database in SEO shop. We uh, we just calculate we count how many products you have active and those information we retrieve from SEO shop. So if you add a product to uh, to your product database, you will see it increase in in your dashboard as well. If you run out of products. Uh, for instance, if you sell uh, all of your products, you will see the dashboard telling you that you have zero active SKUs. So SKU is a product that is ready for sale. Yeah, great. Actually, there's one more question coming in um, from uh, Martin, and he's asking, I saw the A and the I icons in the title bar, oh. what do they stand for? Um, they stand for uh, different widget types. Um, Let's, for instance, see the average order value. Now, if we take the total order value, it summarizes uh, all the orders into one total, whereas the average order value calculates the average of the same orders. So you might have a total order value of 100,000 euro, but if it is spread on 50 orders, your average order value would be 2,000. And to indicate that the value uh, or that the widget is using an average approach, you will see a small a in the upper right corner. Those that has a small i stands for inverted. Uh, inverted means that normally high numbers are good, but in inverted, low numbers are good. For instance, number of returns, that's an inverted widget. Um, now, you wouldn't want to have a lot of returns. So in this situation, your target should probably be zero. Um, so inverted widgets will uh, will calculate indexes, etc., based on low numbers being good and not high numbers being good. Those are the th the three different widget types. You're welcome. <laughs> you got a thanks, Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> <Great. laughs> um, okay. Well, if there are no more questions, I think the best thing is indeed that we're going to reach out. Um, to all of you anyway by email. <clears throat> so if you have any questions afterwards, because I can imagine that I mean there's a lot of information, so you, you will probably have a couple of questions. Uh, you can just reply to our email and um, if you send it to me and it's a question for Casper, uh, then I will obviously just uh, send it through to you. Um, yes. You're welcome. I don't know uh, in any time yeah. and uh, if you if you guys try out Stretchboard and experience something that uh, that uh, you you would like to ask about there's a messaging functionality built into Stretchboard as well, so you can answer us any kind of question there, or ask us any kind of question there as well, and we'll be happy to answer. Great. Well, first of all, thank you very much uh, for joining uh, the webinar, Jasper. That's really great. At least I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously, also thanks to all of you for joining the webinar today again. Um, as you know, every month we have a, a webinar. Uh, this time it was in English. I think that. Probably next month will be in English as well, um, but definitely uh, join us. And if you have any questions, definitely reach out to us, and we'll be very happy to to answer all your questions. So, thanks again.